Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Obviously, we are here in Warsaw for the Wargaming.net League Grand Finals. My name is Mitch Ubelezi. I'm here with Mihal Blihaj. Exactly, and we are getting close to the pointy end of the competition. Only a couple more matches left to go, but they are massive. This next one, massive. It's Red Rush Unity versus Navi. That's exactly right. Our two teams out of Russia, and if I'm not mistaken, they haven't actually had a chance to play each other yet, so it's going to be a very, very, very big game. Yep, and let's find out what the audience thinks. Pardon me, I'll speak Polish for a second. Czy mamy tutaj na sali fanów Red Rush Unity? A czy mamy na sali fanów Navi? Navi definitely has some fans here. Let's go a little bit deeper though. Let us put these two teams under the microscope. It's our friends over at the expert desk, of course, the Pierogi loving clutch. What have you got for us, mate? Thanks, Uber and Carmack. I do love me some pierogi. That was awesome. Uh, Carmack told me they had to eat all of it. It was nigh impossible. We got pretty close. Anyways, joining me on the desk, as always throughout the weekend, I got Wilkie, Mr. Mojo, Vagas, and Melly. Nadis Vincere, Navi versus Red Rush Unity. Talk about history between these two teams. Navi used to be named the Red Rush. The Red Rush Unity was the B team for them. And I believe, gentlemen, throughout the history of the two matches that they have had, ever since they have known each other as, as under maybe one banner before, but as professional teams, the Red Rush Unity has never been able to best Navi. Is that true? Yeah, that's yeah. definitely true. They faced in every season, offline and online, uh, each other, and always Navi uh, uh, was the winner at, in, in the end. Um, sometimes they beat them uh, closer, so it just was in nearly a draw or slightly in favor than for Navi in the end. I think this season yeah. is even worse. They only took them one map, and it's, it was in online part. When they came to LAN, it was 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, two, uh, two, especially zero, the grand zero. final. They yeah. don't really play. They just say, okay, we're happy with place two. Now we win it anyway. <laughs> it really feels like that. I mean, I was commenting. It, it feels like that, yeah. yeah, yeah. It feels like they are scared about now in offline events. Teams, I really hope uh, for their own good. They will fight till the, till the end now. Yeah, you put yourself in a mental sell, if you will, of, well, we're never going to beat them, so we shouldn't have our hopes dashed every time we go against them. And I can understand that type of mentality when you always know it's going to be a blowout. Then you try to work on very specific things. Maybe work on a very specific strategy on a single map. or trying to analyze a single strategy on a single map. But this is the first time that we have such a large prize pool and such a coveted trophy that they're That's going to be true. playing for. And the Red Rush Unity, I feel they need to play their hearts out. Who wouldn't? It's now Mr. or never. It's now or never. It's now or never. Winner continues on. We'll face Virtus Pro in the grand finals. The loser goes home, but the loser will secure that third place. And I actually look forward to seeing uh, the type of strategies they're going to bring to the maps, but we're going to have the uh, map veto in just a little bit. Let's take a little bit more of a look at Navi at the stats overall. We've seen this before, but analyzing their creativity, accuracy, fight coordination, decision making, this is how they win at tournaments, that patient play. But we haven't seen that this weekend. It has been the aggression coming from Navi. Yeah, yeah, aggression, aggressiveness. Yeah. We should change that now. Yeah. <laughs> we should change it now. I mean, it's not the truth anymore after the game against Vitus Pro. They made the pace. Totally aggressiveness they have on the chart is low. And we always know this wait, wait, and then attack. But this was like complete turnover. They started every engagement from the start, immediately. Excellent. They actually had two rushes now, which is unseen, unheard of. I haven't seen them in months, do something like that, except maybe on Himmelsdorf. Well, we spoke extensively about Navi in the previous matchup, and if you're not familiar with World of Tanks Esports, this is the top team in the world, at least the shared opinion right now, but they still have to prove that in this tournament because Virtus Pro is still in the domination station. They still will have an advantage no matter who wins this series because they're coming from the winner's bracket. Red Rush Unity is a team that we can't count out, gentlemen. I mean, obviously, they've worked very, very hard to be here representing the Russian region, but they're made up, uh, both these teams are made up of Ukrainians, Belarusians, and also Russians. Creativity, not really the same as Navi, but the fight coordination and accuracy is also one of their strong points. Their aggressiveness is their strong point compared to Navi. I feel that Red Rush Unity could show Navi a thing or two when it comes to how to properly aggress on these maps. This is uh, definitely the moment they have waited the entire their gaming life. 
they must fight. This this battle is more important for them than if they pass the finals. Because if they pass Navi here, they finally proved their point that all this losing all this time is not for in vain. Thanks. So this this is finals for them. I see it like that. And they will put everything they know or can do in this. Nothing else matters after that. Hey, it's actually interesting. Will Navi play all their cards now? Because they, if they want to... Uh, beat Redbrush now, they still need to beat British Pro. And Virtus is very dangerous. Yeah, and showed. Virtus has, has one, a one point lead in the finals, so yeah. do they want to bring all the cards or <laughs> how yeah. many cards are on? <laughs> yeah. 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 At this point of the tournament, you have to show everything. I mean, top three. There's no space for some old stuff. You have to bring everything on the yeah, table if you want to win. Who knows, maybe their sleeve is deep and there's <laughs> more aces here. Yeah, I mean, Navi got especially with something prepared. But um, we talked yesterday also about it, that Navi can play aggressive. Often people think, if you only watch an uh, offline event, that they will play defensive and waiting for the two-minute mark. But if you watch also the online games, they always play aggressive. And they're also the best to attack. So I think they just changed their game style to surprise their enemies in playing more aggressive. And they got also something special for Unity now. Yeah, now no, now no one knows. Will they push? Will they stay? Will, yeah. they, oh. Will they play steps? Should they stay? <laughs> Should they go? No. <laughs> the aggressiveness again, I, I love how teams are trying to set the pace at the beginning. But there is that fear. And, and Navi is now in a position that they don't want to be in in the lower bracket finals, and some of them may be griping towards the commander, saying, yeah. hey, why do we play these strategies aggressive when it didn't work towards us? This is deja vu. They had this in Season 1 on the Russian cluster. Red Rush Unity almost threw them out. They were, like, this close. And the uh, only thing that backfired on them was their youth. So, yeah. usually, Red Rush Unity loses to Navi to being too aggressive and hasty in some moments, if some of their initial plans fall apart. So we will see, will they, did they take their lessons and can they calm down and do this more by, by, by the book? Melly, a lot of people I know are commentating on Twitter. We'll check back with you later on in the day today, but make sure to hashtag the grand finals, ladies and gentlemen, on Twitter and Facebook. And here we go. This is going to be the map veto between Navi and Red Rush Unity. Coin is flipped. Muppe is our head admin. We'll be going through the map veto process. The winner of the coin flip gets to choose home or away. They will get the first map veto for the home team. Away gets to choose the second one. And then home team chooses the fifth map. Away chooses the side. Bounces back and forth until we have all five maps. Navi bent ends. Back to the roots. <laughs> oh my god, roots. again? Yeah. Yeah. Again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I was really. I would like to know if they really burned the jerseys like they did in the season one finals. <laughs> I can really understand that. We had some big win, uh, loss streaks on Ensk as Kazna, and we banned it one entire season. I think I know. all 20 matches. And then when we finally played it, because we prepared something, and I was like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> they actually played this. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Cliff. Cliff out of the, out of the map pool, gentlemen. So Steps is in. Steps is in. But steps Uzzah. will probably be the fifth map. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> Mine's Prohorovka, Ruinberg, Himmelsdorf. Uh, for you history buffs, Prohorovka is one of the biggest tank battles of, of all time. In the real world, you guys can Google that, get more information. Shout out to Soviet. Prohorovka. Prohorovka will be the fifth match. That's surprising, so. So we could see steps. Possible. But I think steps, steps is a really good. played map, yeah. and yes. I know, don't know. Do, do the Russians even have the steps in the pool? As they had, but um, not in the third season. Not in the finals, no. Yeah, so yeah, but they trained really a lot, and Navi is also strong on it. I mean, they train it every week and then go four cups. So well, if if, if, if we do see it, I would love to comment on how the center road can be such a trench type warfare game and used properly can be an amazing fast flag cap type scenario, especially with teams in the north try to go over to the East Valley. There were some changes to the map in the recent uh, patches. They were very significant. Yeah, very, very significant changes over on the east. South was really inferior in many ways previously, but now with all those little hills added, it uh, adds to mobility of the team who can use covers now, even the lack of spotting because north could always spot out easy. So now, now it's much more interesting to play. Yeah, I think Steps is similar to Prokhorovka. Mm -hmm. You can use T32s, staying hold down, more mm -hmm. defensive. You can go aggressive with 3, 4, 30, 90s. Also, you can go around like in Prokhorovka, you go on totally north, red line hugging or in the south. And Steps is the same, you can go over the hills in the south or in the north. We actually had previously a lemming train uh, on uh, Pro League. 
they had a tactic with i3. And it worked for them a few times, but uh, they overplayed it a bit and uh, yeah. backfired when maybe, they met us. Maybe you remember the tactic we played against Spale on uh, Prokhorovka with three I3s. Just yeah. pushed the 1-2 line and one shot on uh, 3090s with three I3s. That's Bam Bam dead. Mape still waiting for final confirmation from Red Rush Unity on the next map. They are de de uh, debil... <laughs> wow, I'm losing my words, guys. Deliberating. I was going to say debilitating, but... That's not the right word. They could be debilitating the time that it's taking for them to de <laughs> deliberate to find out what the map they want to have. Well, at least we have only one Russian. Oh my god, again two. <laughs> <laughs> it's they that, should, they it's should a committee. Be under, um, they should be able to understand each other at least. They don't need translator for this. Steps. Steps will be number map four. number four. Wow, that's the closest I think we've seen to Steps maybe getting played here. Yeah. Like Mojo said, this is the finals for Unity, so they want to really think each map there. Mm -hmm. But I think to find the tournament, we uh, most likely only see three maps. So only PvP against uh, Fnatic was a five-map game. In all other games, we only saw three maps so far. We ever saw the fourth map? No, mm. no, I don't think so. It's been a rarity. It's yeah. been mostly when it goes into the decider match, which is based on the point system that exactly. we've seen, Sand River. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't. We have not seen a full five except for oh, Fnatic CP. Ruinberg, Ruinberg, number three. So Mines and Himmelstuff are left. Mm, you gentlemen have been calling Mines as the first map many times. Will that pattern change, or will it stay no. the same? Uh, second Mines. I first would say Himmelsdorf. Himmel is you preferable. think first Himmelsdorf? Yeah. Himmelsdorf on ice could it be the first map? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the other way. It'll be a great musical. Well, it's going to be Mines. Himmelsdorf will be second. It didn't change. Well, it really depends who picks first. Yeah. I mean, on Mines, I think Navi will play something similar, like they played against Virtus Pro, it worked well. And if it works against Virtus Pro, it will also work against Unity. Or it should at least. Well, guys, this picking of the maps is as tactical as tactics for the map. Like, you can let your opponent maybe even pick the tech, the map, like... Uh, and leave Himmelsdorf for them to pick the north side, because they know Navi prefers it and they already have something prepared for south. That no yeah, one seen. Maybe he got a special tactic to break through the defensive on the Mind left games. of the corner. Mind games, yeah. indeed. And there's the handshake. And Navi and Red Rush Unity will go to their booths, finalize. Oh, there's some cheers coming out from the crowd. They will finalize their setups, and we'll get the game underway. But before that, gentlemen, let's let's talk about the rosters here from Navi. We got Deluxe Strike, who you see in the left side of your screen, Le Shaw, Power Slide who's been phenomenal in the T32s today. Inspire, Eclipse, Kiverloid. Which one of these guys would you want on your team if they were a free agent? I would say Lishal. He's always funny and in a good mood, and he's playing perfectly in the 69. Yeah, um, for me, it would be Strike. He's definitely one of the best players in their team and one of the most experienced players in the, in the World of Tanks overall. Red Rush Unity, Renal. Diador, Lusiquel, Cappy, Nuclear, the Anatolich, and please help me with the last one, fellas. Artistichny. 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 I'm going to call him Artist. In America, we're going to call him Artist. Let's call him Artist. Artistichny. The run of Red Rush Unity so far, they beat UAD. They defeated NOA twice in the group stage. They continued on through today. They had a match against Virtus Pro yesterday, and they lost that match. Virtus Pro went on to face Fnatic. Fnatic went down. That's where we saw the amazing finale of last night. And we also want to remind everyone that the MVP award will be declared a little bit later. The winner will receive an Alienware 17 gaming laptop. Let us know which person once. Oh, you, Magus, sorry, yeah, it can't yeah. be you. This is your MVP reward. You get to commentate oh, okay. with us, which, by the way, thank you for joining us throughout the day. Uh, tweet favorite. at us. Batman, my favorite. Batman, your favorite? Batman, your favorite? I want to hear what the audience's favorite is. Uh, the tweet, of course, the hashtag, the Grand Finals, the Grand Finals. Gentlemen, we've seen some MVPs individually on the teams. I'd say Nuclear was uh, the MVP for that last series, at least. But for the overall tournament, you're going to say Batman, Magus? Yeah, I'd okay. say I'm Batman. <laughs> All right, well, we'll find out. <laughs> Still deliberation happening. And 
uh, also vote for the MVP, ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook as well, using that hashtag, the Grand Finals. And also, there is a challenge for the community. More information is on Facebook for one of the beautiful mice that we have. Two of them. We have two of them? All right. So we don't say mouses. We say mice in English. <laughs> uh, they're two razor mice. And also the Panzerkumpfwagen. Did I say it right? Hydraulic. Hydraulic. <laughs> the hydraulic. The hydraulic. Uh, mouse pad that you will have an opportunity to win. So Melly will be watching like a hawk, both Twitter and Facebook. Final preparations almost set, and when they are, this could be the finals of the finals. For Red Rush Unity, a lot to prove here in this match, but we still have the grand final after this. The grand final will be a best of seven. We're still currently in the best of five. Gentlemen, it's crazy. We only have two more games, and it's over. Yeah. We crown a champion. So fast. Too fast. I want more. <laughs> I want more. After the Navi game against uh, Virtus Pro, I could uh, watch this the whole day. Well, if you want more, if you're watching from home, make sure to hit that follow button on Twitch because more and more World of Tanks action will continue throughout the year. This has been the culmination of the first three seasons in different regions, and I'm looking forward to see how it's going to grow exponentially, which it has since it started. More teams will form, more talents will rise, more heroes will be crowned. I would say it's really important. We saw that uh, Great Desire can bring a team really high up. PvP is like perfect example, out of nowhere, completely unknown, fourth place. GG. Brilliant. And the second yeah. example, good example, is Lemming Train. With the support of the crowd, they did really well. Yeah. yeah, and it shows how important these offline finals, these lands are to have a live audience. And exactly. how that changes the uh, dynamic. If we, if we would value skill, skill-wise, definitely Lemming Train should be here now in this match. But seeding was such, and we have this. Seeding is part of the story. Simp, I believe, impressed a lot of people. I don't yeah. believe I know they impressed a lot of At people. At least American people. That was unexpected <laughs> also. The, the, yeah. No, no, no. That, that was really strong. That's true, yeah. Beating all those guys, that was against all odds. Against yeah. all odds. No one expected it. Not even them, I would say. Yeah. They, they have been looking to other teams and working with other teams in their strategy and, and echoing what we saw from Na'Vi, we saw from Simp with their aggression. Yeah. I would also say that Simp had beaten um, PvP super fans in the game instead. Is he playing instead of Fnatic in this position? Man, the audience is packed, ladies and gentlemen. There's still a line outside to get in. People have got their popcorns or sodas. They're ready for the game to begin. So are we. It's We're a proper movie night. <laughs> <laughs> and the screen is gigantic, by the yeah. way. This is actually one of the most beautiful cinemas I've ever seen here uh, in the world. But we're here live from Warsaw, Poland. There they are. They're excited. Uh, we apologize for the slight delay, guys. We want to make sure that each of the players are good to go, set with their settings at optimal configurations so they can play the best game. Admins are communicating with them for final. Yeah, but the Polish crowd is just awesome. On every event, the cheering, it's beautiful to see. It's what my heartbeat gets faster. Yeah, and it, it really makes all the hard work pay off for each of these teams that have a chance to play on the main stage. Now, unfortunately, not every team got to have that experience, but we try to uh, adjust our schedule and make sure that we can bring you the most hype matches. But we had a number of hype matches in the foyer as well throughout the weekend. A lot of people got to witness those and hear, I believe it was PvP kind of going nuts yeah. uh, when they got the draw against Na'Vi <laughs> saying, we took one game off of Na'Vi, even though it was a draw. Very, uh, very few guys on this planet can say the same. Exactly. So that's true. Th that's a very high right. club, I yeah. would say. Well, let's talk about the draw scenario while we're here, while we, while we wait for these players. Sand River we've seen twice here on the main stage and twice we've been completely surprised by yeah. what what happened. And I want to talk about the simp play, the simp play with the sand dunes, moving out towards those Pershings and taking over that area. And Mac G said, hey, we've had experience with that map before because it was played about a year and a half ago before the league was officially launched, but there was a number of competitions. Do these teams put that map at the forefront of their training? Or is it more of a, a second thought, kind of a happenstance, hey, if it happens, we're going to choose defensive, we're not going to choose aggressive, and we're going to play our best tanks game? Um, you go for the tactics, for sure, on the map. You train it maybe well, for one or two hours, but it's not the main focus, because you focus on your normal maps, because these are the first things you have to do. And yeah, after you finish all your normal maps, then you go for this map. I know at least that Lemming Train prepared in the last week before the finals for this map, and before that, they only trained normal maps. Navi had also one big meeting about the map, 
and talking about it before they decided how do they want to play here, maybe with Adley, maybe not. But yeah, not a special training. I believe they all had to actually invest more time in that Sand River than any other map because every other team plays all these maps for years. Yeah. And they watch the patches, they know every rock, bush, cover, whatever. So they can think up, think up tactics and use very few words to describe what they actually want to do. But Sand River? Complete unknown. Okay, you have to start, you have to go on the map, you have to drive it, to feel it, to see the timings to see the specific angles of shooting, yeah. to figure out T1 positions, to give ideas the one, one, another, one player to another. So that's the process of thinking that lasts, that, that goes for hours, days. So I believe that was the hardest work for them all. Navi finishes their huddle, they're going to sit back down, we're almost ready to go. Our last comments I want to make before we throw it to the commentators is each of the viewers that we have that's part of a pro team I know they're taking notes right now. I know they're going to try to adopt these strategies that have been working. And the closer and closer we get to the grand finals, the higher octane type aggression we may see or more of the longer patient plays. If there's one play that you've seen, gentlemen, that you would like to adopt for your personal teams, what would it be? Or if there's one team that you've been watching so far that you want to, uh, to adopt or learn from, who has it been for this weekend? I would go for Navi because they are still the team who is one step ahead and doing the new tactics. Virtus Pro also impressed me a lot from the tactics side, but still Virtus Pro also react to the tactics from Navi this time. Navi was super aggressive, so Virtus Pro have to react and didn't show what they want to play. Basically, they could uh, save it for the finals, but yeah, Navi is still the team you have to look at. I. I feel the same way for Virtus Pro with the snap reactions, yeah. the very fast firefighting, the good brawl modes, the 2 1 victories, and for some of the other teams, I've seen really good 2v2s in separate sides of the maps. I would have to say for America, one of the big things that these teams are going to have to work on is how to play as a seven tank unit, how to play together, not every to keep getting counts. divided. Yeah. Every tank counts, every shot you take counts. So, respecting that. And knowing how to calculate that in a game, that's true art, I would say. Yeah, and for me, I think uh, every team should look up on these teams, especially Navi, and look at how good they share those HP on those tanks. They always cover their tanks. Navi is the best team doing that, and that's a really good example to look up to. Well, the Red Rush Unity is tired of looking up towards Na'Vi. They maybe want to look to the side or down upon them True. if they get a victory here. It may be a tough battle ahead for them, but I feel that this will be an incredible series between these two teams. And now it's time to throw it to the commentators. Much clutch on the analytics desk. You've been great this entire tournament, giving us the insights that we might miss in the action. Because well, we've got to we've got to see exactly what's going on at the time. You guys have been giving us lots of things to think about, like things we missed that we didn't have. And it's been a pleasure being here. This is actually the last game that we will be casting for you. But there is one more after this. Whoever beats each other here will go against Virtus Pro later on today. But it's been absolutely fantastic. The crowd here has been wild. Uh, Warsaw itself, a lovely place. How have you enjoyed it? I have loved Poland. This is my first time to Europe and it has been absolutely spectacular. Everyone here has been so nice and polite and welcoming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Warsaw, you guys are absolutely beautiful. We love you all. Anyway, we have Navi versus Red Rush. There they go. The delay because of the Polish. We love you all. Anyway, we do have Unity versus Navi. Now, Navi have got the track red to completely destroy Unity here. Statistics wise, if you're going on the voting, it's going to be Navi's game, right? But what about Unity? They have played so many more games. They are so more, much more ready for this. They have gone from being not so good to really warmed up and their engine is smooth. Yeah, they've just dusted all of that rust off for the weeks before this World Finals. They've getting that momentum going. Every, uh, against PvP, it was a straight 3-0. That was amazing. We were expecting PvP to at least take one off, but they showed that they could really take on anything. No matter where PvP came at them, they deflected every bit of aggression. Na'Vi has been more aggressive than we expected this tournament, and I think that Unity will be able to deflect a lot of that Na'Vi aggression. And of course, Na'Vi is just coming off a loss, where their aggression was actually deflected rather expertly. Yeah, uh, Virtus Pro dealt with the aggression very well, dealt with the cap fast attack and all those sort of strategies. Unity have been very
very adaptable against PvP Super Friends. Now, we have to say that Navi is maybe one step ahead of PvP Super Friends on that sort of thing. So maybe it would make the difference here against Unity. We don't know. But then again, Navi just came off a loss instead of a win. So they are, all, well, Unity are already running and Navi are all on the back foot. So that could be the mentality difference here. However, Navi are just as experienced and offline. They have that. I can't say it enough. They've beaten Unity over and over again offline. Yeah, and now we're going to head over to Mines for our first battle. Uh, the hill control so crucial, and also spawns being very uh, important for the way these teams will be able to lay themselves out as they fight for the middle of the map. Yeah, Mines is one of these maps we either see incredibly quick play or incredibly technical play. Fnatic shows how quickly you can destroy the opponent right at the start, but we've also seen other teams take it nice and slow and destroy their enemy over and over again. But let's hear it for Navi versus Unity, the end of the loser's brackets, the last chance for both these teams to get into the finals to take that monolith away from Virtus Pro. But first game on Mines, let's see those tanks. For tanks, we have three T69s and two 1390s. Against an Object 416, a T69, 1390, and two WZ-132s. I love this two WZ-132 lineup from Unity. I want to see how this fight goes, because it will be happening on the top of the hill. This is going to be one of those quick battles, it seems, as the T69s have that advantage normally, but the WZs are going for something quick. This looks just like Fnatic's tactic, but they use a lot in the offline of, sorry, the events with the NA season, but here we go, the fight is starting. Dardo is already doing a lot of damage against Killeroy. Killeroy taking a ton of damage as Cap is distracting them. Dardo gets his whole clip off. Antelis and Lucica reflecting the Inspire and Strike as they try and get around the back of Dardo. Can their autoloaders hold this off as they are going down with out of ammo? But it looks like Navi are taking so much damage as the Deluxe is already down. But the damage is spread thin on both teams and the Inspire is the first to go down. But Antelis, Dardo, Lucica all very low and Cap goes down the T1. It's anybody's game right now as all the tanks are taking damage. Look at the reloads. It's Killeroy coming off reload right now. He's going to be able to do it. He's going to take down Nuclear in one more shot. He misses it. He hits the ground. Can he hit the last shot? Yes, he can. It's going in the favor of Navi, but now he's out of shells. But Power Slide comes up to push them back. Antelis and Dido cannot help Rhino. Rhino has to get out of there as Eclipse goes for the scouting. What a battle so far. It, it's just incredible. The Shah is going to be able to stop a counterattack by Unity. Rhino, though, is the tank, I think, who can bring this back. He needs two shells, and he can take out either the Shah or Kirill. Yeah, but if he reloads, this could be all over for them if they push. But look at the HP. There is nothing left. Power Slide is the only guy who could possibly take something. But he's got Amarag damage. It's taking him a lot longer to reload than usual. It looks like a bit of Amarag damage there. Antelis and Dardo, though, can be taken out pretty quickly. But here we go. Arty is going for the cap pressure. That could make Navi split, reveal their rears, and could cost them the game. But 1 minute 30 is a long, long time. Rhino coming off the hill, losing his track in the process. He came off a little bit clumsy. He must be panicking the morale there, but oh my god, Antelich goes down! What a move there! I, I almost didn't see that, but Kelo takes out another one! Unity in a lot of trouble is Rhino! Uh, what happened? The cap pressure is against Navi, and they're coming down, and Power Slide slides off the hill, goes for Rhino, one more shot, and Unity lose their first game! Navi showing us how it's played on Mines, what a fantastic first map! I loved what I saw out of the 1390s Inspire and Strike. They actually hid behind a rock on the way up to the hill so that the tanks, the two WZ-132s going up to the top actually could not spot them. And so they actually were able to delay their attack and then just went straight across the middle, right into that Object 416 and <laughs> another tank. Shot's going for the ram, or is he going to push? He's missing his shot. What a dodge there by RT, but there we go. Lausha wins it for Navi. Map number one on mines. Aggressive as you like. There he cracks his neck at the end. It's like, okay, I miss it. Whatever. Ugh, next time. I must crush you. <laughs> Was that your Russian attempt? No. Anyway, we saw what a fantastic battle that was. I, I cannot say how awesome that was, but what a risky maneuver. Navi was counting the shots and moved two of their tanks in the open, as you said, right across. And they were counting the 69s. They're like, okay, we have 23 seconds to make a move. And if we do it at the exact right time, we can just crush those 69s. If we kill the 69s, then they won't get a second clip. And wow, just... Just, wow. Exactly. I was worried, though, about the WZ-132s. I thought they might have been able to, with that consistent fire, and if they were mounting 85 mils, just do too much damage for this attack to succeed. There was a lot of consistent fire. 
in the Unity team. And that actually may have worked against them because you didn't have enough burst. Even though the T69 had some burst, 1390 had some burst, it wasn't maybe enough to deal with this full autoloader lineup. T three T69s and two 1390s, that's too much. Too much momentum that you get, and it's difficult to come back from. And I think that's exactly what Navi knew. Because look at it. They knew that they uh, the 69s would be reloaded first, but they also lose a couple of seconds. Uh, they're not actually firing immediately as they're reloaded. So the 1390s will be ready to fire very shortly after the 69s expel their shells. And that's exactly what they did. They took advantage. Like, hey, we do have the burst damage advantage, even though they've got 69s. So let's go in there with our 1390s as soon as they're reloaded, when the T69s are on reload, and destroy them. That was their plan. It worked. It was risky. And it was down. And this is what high-level play is about, is down to the millisecond, it's down to every single shot. And Navi pulled it off. Pulled it it, it off. was well played. A mistake, though, by I think it was Rhino in that 1390. He held on to two shots. I'm not sure I agree with holding on to those two shells. What do you think? Yeah, that was. I, I think I commentated on that during the actual battle. I was like, if he reloads now mm. and Navi knows, they can push against the two down there. But if Rhino comes around the side and then uh, gets those two shells off, the Navi uh, tanks were all very low HP. That would have made a world of difference. Power Slide with 870 HP, though, could have easily taken those two shells into destroyed him, so I kind of agree with it, but he didn't use them. He should have come in when he saw, well, before his two teammates died, yeah. basically. They didn't use it. They did die. Rhino, if he reloaded, may have been able to recover, but either way, Slide came down. He, he slid down the hill and took him out. So, whichever way you look at it, it didn't really matter either way, because Navi just were one step ahead. Yeah, they, they'd already won by that point. Kind of. It's, it was just the two shots there from Lashar and his teammate, his battle buddy, there on the hill. There so. you go. I'm glad you've adopted <laughs> battle buddy. It's a great term. It's, well, it's, it's really true. Uh, we were talking about it many times, that you get with the five battle tanks you've got, two groups of two mm -hmm. and an uh, individual player. Almost every team runs this. The individual player, the commander says, okay, you know what you're doing? This is your basic strategy. Uh, see you later. Like Elian from uh, Lemming Train, he's their guy who's on their own, but the other guys are in pairs, they're always together. Um, you got Soviet and Nagatron from Fnatic, always together. So this is one thing you, you see, and they work together, they cover each other, they share each other's HP, they focus down targets. It's a great term because it, it reflects the gameplay. Yeah, it's a, uh, I actually, I kind of stole it from, I learned that it was actually a, in the US military, battle buddy system. And it was, there's a number of reasons that they implemented it, but it just was a great way to keep someone else in check, uh, watch somebody's back. It's just, I, uh, you should maybe, if you get a chance to read up on the battle buddy program. Oh, well, definitely. That's something, if you want to learn more about military history, that's something that uh, World of Tanks is always encouraging. So it's a really good thing to do. Anyway, one more thing we've got to talk about, though, is the next map, Himmelstorf, where we've seen some crazy plays from both these teams and all the other teams as we have progressed through this tournament. Now, Himmelstorf traditionally is very safe for both these teams, but against Virtus Pro, it was different. Yeah, uh... Himmelsdorf is just a, a city map, of course. Guys, the hill control is crucial, along with the track side has been in, uh, used very often in this tournament. I think most of the time we've seen west side pushes. Sometimes hill play, uh, something in the middle, but everyone's been going around that one, two line. Yeah, it's all in the west. It's all in the open terrain. It's these guys fighting out over the open terrain, very rarely using the banana. Uh, always a skirmish on the hill. It's kind of decided on the hill, but most of the fighting happens in the west. But beautiful Winter Himmelsdorf. Navi versus Red Rush Unity. 1-0 so far for Navi. Hear it there. We go into Winner's Himmelsdorf with one map up for Navi. Maybe they'll play more defensive, or will they want to have a further lead to secure the victory. Let's find out what tanks they've picked. We've got three 5100s and two IS3s for either side. At mirror lineups, this is the most common lineup, again, for Himmelsdorf. You've got the three 5100s, plenty of burst with two IS3s to bring just enough alpha, some great armor, and the hit points. It's all about those hit points. Yeah, it is. You don't want to take the 1390 because the map is quite small and you don't really need the 1390 for that reason. Yeah, d um, do you see what I'm seeing in the southeast from the Unity team? Yeah, it looks like the first time we're having a full hill strat. We've actually seen a lot of double 5100 plays on the hill, but we've not seen two pairs of battle buddies gearing up on the hill. They're using a IS-3, so this is a full hit str um, hill strat. The reason they leave the IS-3 there at G4 
is purely to reveal to the enemy, hey, we're in normal positions. Yeah, Don't worry about us, we're standard. And that is the risk you take. Because if that guy gets taken out before your heal play comes into effect, then things can go horribly wrong for you. However, they have to, and if this is going to be risky, is everyone is going across at the moment that they're going to scout it. Eclipse and Killeroid are ready to see this. Can they do it? And, and it's going to be a squeeze. Rhino down in the southwest in G4 is spotted, so Na'Vi may still not, you know, realize what exactly is going on. If they knock over a tree, though, I think Na'Vi is good enough to re uh, recognize this. Nope. Deluxe is sitting there down is below in that there T1. Is no, there's no, 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 they have not over a tree. It's a big surprise. This is it. They can actually decide it here and now. But wait a minute. Kiroid smells something. He knows something's wrong. He's out of there. How did he figure that out? Uh, it's Maybe he's just actually bored, but Cap 1 is pushing up. And he's so aggressive that it may have actually been enough Ooh. to tell. Shots fired, no connection, but there, Eclipse is down. That was a beautiful play by Unity, but Navi are so experienced that the fact they didn't see any moves or anything on the left-hand side, it was just okay. Well, Strike actually received another shot on the west, which is really good for Unity, but that was a big play. And I love that move from the IS-3. Once their play on the hill was revealed, he withdrew from the front line. That's a big mistake we see teams like Fnatic not do. When they're spotted on the hill and the hill strat fails, they don't withdraw their front line. Which they just have to do. You have to withdraw from that front line because exactly. they can get caught out. Exactly. The push, what uh, you usually expect that push just to come right down the three line. Uh, great shot, though, by Rhino. It's such a thin shot from where he was, the, his keyhole position, into yet another keyhole position uh, to where Strike was. I uh, Just a show of incredible marksmanship by that IS-3. Yes, yeah, Strike received a shot, and I don't think they expect that. Now they do have an T1 disadvantage plus a 400 uh damage uh, disadvantage, but their T1 on the hill means that Navi has to split the defense. They can't leave the east exposed. They cannot do it. They, so they now are split up and oh my god, oh. Eclipse and Dulux are now down. They are completely blind. We are now seeing Navi on full defensive and there we get the snow in the face as Antelish does dodge a shell there from Strike. It's alright, he's not spotted anymore. He may Respire, be able to sorry. escape, but blind fire could still be coming. Inspirer is still firing up onto the hill and no connection again. Just a poof of snow. That's a beautiful snow to the face. That, that must make the heart stop of Angelis. Whoa, okay, okay, a better move as that snow is right in my face. Anyway, Inspire at day, more blind shots, still nothing connecting. Navi are on full defensive right now. I think I actually saw blind fire towards Inspire, maybe from the south. I thought I saw more snow. Inspire fires yet again yeah. onto the hill. He is, well, he's got plenty of ammo. IS-3 is not going to run out of ammo on such a small battlefield, but they are in trouble. Uh, what can they do against two T1s still alive and zero damage on Unity thus far? It's the Northwest defensive position. They can still defend and they have a little bit of flexibility. However, they are backed into a corner as much as they can. It's going to be Red Rush Unity needing to dig them out if they want or take this to a draw. I don't think Na'Vi is in any position to try and win this at this point. Red Rush Unity is going to take a few minutes, probably around, I'd guess, the four minute or three minute mark before we see them get within 100 meters of each other. Yeah, this is going to be one of those strategic decisions for Unity. They're going to play much like, was it Virtus Pro did, where they hit a T1 on the south side to make sure they can't lose and they will attack with a few minutes left to make sure that they can't lose because playing defensive on Himmelsdorf is really hard to crack and they don't want to lose this battle. They've got the advantage. They want to make sure they have a chance to win, which is entirely possible, but they saw Virtus lose the assault against Navi's defense on Himmelsdorf in the exact same situation and they almost lost it. It was down to a second. So I can understand why Unity right now are hesitating. Exactly. There's also the possibility for Unity to try and do uh, a cap and simultaneous brawl. You put those T1s on cap, uh, like that southeast portion of the blue cap, you know what I'm talking about, where the building curves ever so slightly, you can kind of hide a T1 in there, and then you just attack from the west. You try and come around, you go along the D-line, you're gonna see, I believe, who are those, uh, Diador, and he had a battle buddy with with him, they can jump into the D-line, start heading west, so they can begin the engagement almost face-to-face. -face. Maybe we'll see other tanks go up the five line and come from the cap to, uh, from those two directions. Navi is not quite in a position to do a breakout, a, to attack in one direction to break out of that surrounded position. In order for them to win, they're gonna have to stop cap 
and at the same time win this brawl. An incredibly difficult situation as they are down in hit points. Strike again is at 1019. Yeah, Strike is damage. That is one of the biggest issues for them. But the biggest issue is losing those T1s, as you said. Now, uh, Unity have to make this attack. They are one game down. They don't really want to draw a game where they have a massive advantage. It's hard to get this far ahead of Navi in the first place, let alone uh, when, you know, in another map. So Cap is hiding in, uh, or using the terrain to his max. His small tanks can hide in these little places. Actually, the 1390s can hide in another place on the A7. There's uh, another place they can hide right there and get a few shots off. Yeah, there's, a, there's also one uh, cubby, like a garage, practically, in Charlie 6 up the 5 line. There's a number of those. I actually didn't know about the one in in Charlie Seven that we just saw. I, I never drive through that little side road or pay attention to the. I love in there. when I'm in a 1390 driving these little cubby holes with my gun looking back behind it and uh, the gun pointing out. So when someone's chasing you, you, quickly get in there and he drives past you. Shoot him in the side, get that HP advantage. It's, I love those little tricky things you can do. But um, back, back to the battle, we are very close to seeing the engagement. Red Bridge Unity is just lining up just outside of the controlled zone of Na'Vi. There's not a lot of spotting going on. It's just you're waiting for the flank to happen. They're actually taking Artie, who, previous was, who previously was being put in the east side to maybe be on a fast cap, is going to actually go out to the west and possibly uh, be used as a sewer scout to scout and die. He will die, uh, but if he doesn't, that's Navi holding their shells, knowing that the engagement is coming. If they waste a shell, that's one shell less that they have, and with that, that will probably trigger Unity to push around the corner all at one time and just begin this brawl. It's going to be very dangerous. It's going to be close. Yeah, the T1 absorbing some DPS when in such a critical fight will cause a big upset if used correctly. Now, we are seeing Unity moving up with Cap. As you said, on that corner there, he might be able to get into that Cap zone unspotted. It's going to be close, though. If they're going to try and do it simultaneously, actually. Artie and Cap are going to begin scouting at the exact same time. They may both go down, but it's going to be a big enough distraction that when Red Rush Unity actually pushes, that could be two shells or even three, depending. And there's oh. the first T uh, T1 goes down. Artie is down, but Cap is not. That is, you know what? This is risky. Unity are not holding a T1 back for the possible draw situation. They are committing, and that's the best way to do it if you want to win. And we are going to see the battle happen, but hold on. One of the T1s is actually back yeah. off, just as I mentioned now. They lose one of the T1s. They're not going to do a double T1 strat. Instead, this is going to be a full engagement. One minute 30 left on the clock. Navi have to win and counterattack immediately if they want this win. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Unity are moving in against Navi right now as Nuclear goes in first and his IS-3 to absorb the damage from Killeroid. So far, no damage to Navi, and they are putting out so much damage to Unity. Unity's assault is not going so well as expected, as the Antelich is the only one on the rear. As Nuclear is on the retreat. Lucique taking a lot of damage from Power Slide. What a defensive play here from Navi, as they are receiving little damage, but Killeroid is going low. If he can be focused down before he gets all his shells off, and he gets... Oh, he's still got two shells, and they're not able to get another shot on him. It looks in trouble for Unity, as as most of their tanks are down to one as well, but Diodor protecting his teammates, but he goes down. It was too much damage. Strike and Killeroy goes down in exchange. Parson, only one hit of damage against him. Inspire receives one now. Lashard down to two shots, but Inspire burning. He's burning badly, and he blows up. Now you've got Power Side and Lashard. Only one's left. 35 seconds of the clock, but a lot of reloading. Lucique is out of shells. Nuclear, though, and Rhino are IS3s. They uh, do not need to reload. And They're look, going Power, Slide Power Slide is going to block. He's going to block to keep his ally alive. Nuclear is stopped. Now Rhino tries to sneak past and he gets past Power Slide. But that might be too little too late and Power Slide doing a great job getting around by Lucique almost taken out. They might be enough. It might be enough. Lishar got away. What a play from Power Slide. What a play from Power Slide. But Nuclear takes him down. There is one tier eight and I think he has 499 hit points. He cannot be one shot by one of these IS3s. It's he needs to be shot twice and he's done. Draw. Power Slide saved the team. Wow. You called it, sir. He was trying to get past, and Power Slide just did the mouse maneuver. Got there on the side. I remember Cl Clan was early days. Yes. On Himmelstorf, just putting the, the mouse in the way, two of them, and just blocking the way. And that's exactly what happened there.
Oh my god, what an old, old school block. I can't believe he even remembered such a play. It's it's when you know you're going to die using your tank to the its maximum effect. Absolutely phenomenal play. This is why Navi is one of our top teams. <laughs> one of the top teams, the individual this, skill and yeah. thing. I, I'm just blown away by such a play. They lost the defense, which was a great move by Unity. Just offense. You cannot deny how great that attack was. But the block from Power Slide, just that moment there, I I just wow. Just, I just quick I, thinking. Yeah, it's 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 so impressive. I I understated. I completely understand. One of our best teams, the best team. There's a reason they're considered the top. There's a reason they are Navi. And this is why Virtus Pro wants to prove that they are the number one because they do not fight them very often. Considering they are the European number one and Navi are the Russian number one, they do not actually get to meet each other very often. And, and Virtus Pro have always been in their shadow. Always been in their shadow. And now, they're today, they did beat them once, but they got to beat them twice. That is the ticket to be known as number one. But now we're actually going to head off to Ruinburg, another city, uh, ma uh, another map with a lot of city. But there is the open area, a little bit. Do you think we're going to see anything like what PvP did, camping in the southwest? Like no. last time? Yeah, it's... I don't think so. The, both these teams, like Fnatic won that uh, break. They won that break. The only mistake they made was a little bit of miscommunication. Hugo going out, Nagatron going out before they were ready, took uh, 400 damage each. It was like 800 HP down. If you look at the battle result after the skirmish happened, they were only 300 HP behind as shared between two tanks. So it was like 100 HP on one, 200 on the other. So that 800 HP they lost before the engagement means that they actually won that break. They won that break. And if they had the HP advantage, then they would have actually beaten that little cap. Now, we're talking skill level of Navi and Unity. I don't think they'll make that mistake. Yeah, um, Unity, though, I don't think they'd be quite as aggressive on Ruinberg as they have been here on Himmelsdorf, especially after being deflected so expertly by Navi. Uh, T1s, though, I think are going to be crucial here because we just saw how T1s affected Navi because they, they were inferior in play this time. They just were not succeeding. Yep. They were not in the right positions. They were not retreating when they needed to be. Unity, though, was playing them just about perfectly. I thought they were going to simultaneously push in, but they actually held one back. They said, you know what? Let's not risk l losing this one. They, may, they went on to win the brawl anyway, but the, the T1 safety net was there. Yeah, they did decide to use that, but only because Cap went down first. I can't remember which T1 actually went down it was, first. It was uh, uh, Artie. Artie, Artie yes. went down first. He went in just a little bit earlier. If they wanted to commit fully, they actually could have won by Cap. They actually had enough time if they went in together and the T1 didn't go down, or it would be enough delay for one of the shots to hit the T1 in the Cap zone if Navi got distracted, that Palsai would not have been able to protect, protect Leshar like that. So that could have been the difference between a win and a loss. Just every second counts, every shell counts. And if you don't go in 100%, that little difference between a win and a draw is what it is. And they had a safe net instead of 100%. So win 90% instead of 100, and that was the difference between a win and a, and a draw. Exactly. Uh, I'll also on top of that, I think maybe a more aggressive counter push by Na'Vi may have been able to bring it back in a brawl. Just, I'm, I'm thinking, because I saw a lot, it took so long for those 5100s to deal the damage they had against Na'Vi through those keyhole positions. If if the if Na'Vi had just pushed out with some of the other tanks that had been further to the west, because of a T1 being uncapped, being pressured to push yeah. out, I, I did, I, the brawl might have actually gone in favor of Na'Vi. It's, it's hard to tell, but as I said, the, the difference is, Going in with everything and going all in in poker, for example, just throw everything in and just hope your luck holds or hold a bit in reserve to have a backup. But if you hold it in reserve, you might not get the result you want. And it is the risk and it is the difference between being confident and not so confident. And it shows me that Unity are a little bit scared. That's why they brought the T1 back. If they were confident in their attack, they would have brought the T1 forward with them. So they had that safety net, as you said. They didn't need it and they should have been confident. And if they went in all in, they might have turned it. That, that they little were, bit more power could have done it. Yeah, they were afraid Navi had two aces, and they were just like, we got my two queens, but well, they only had a pair of threes. The T1 could actually have tracked one of the tanks, for example, and got them out of position. Yeah, maybe. Or even a little bit of damage. One of them burnt to death. Oh, yeah. So the T1 hits in the back or the side of a 5100, pass like it into the side and dying earlier. Anything could have happened. You uh, know, we actually don't see T1s going for tracking anymore. It rarely ever happens. I don't, I don't think I can remember a situation in this tournament where I saw T1 deliberately go for the cap. Uh, sorry, the...
track. track. The track. <laughs> the cap. The track. track. I, I, oh, I can so hear that. Yeah, they, yeah, okay. But they're just they're going for damage. They're shooting the backs of 1390s. They're shooting the correct spots on 5100s to get the pens. Of course, they can't pen at nice three. Okay, so let's go over to the stage to talk to the CEO of Navi. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm joined by Alex, CEO of Navi. So kind of a big deal. And I imagine that being here today, you know, you're already a winner just arriving here. But to be the potential to be crowned champion, what does that do for you? I mean, like, Navi is always uh, trying to struggle only for the first place. It's like, free is everything for us. And I think there is a chance for us to get the third map right now and uh, continue in the grand finals against the Virtus Pro. Now, off camera a second ago, we were just talking and you were saying, looking up the screen and saying, look, strategy, strategy, the strategy is happening. I mean, are, are you familiar to see the team like this? Do you, do, you, do you feel confident when you see them kind of in their, in their zone? I mean, like, I'm following the... Uh, I'm not playing World of Tanks on a daily basis. Meanwhile, I'm following streams, live broadcasting. Some sort of the players and managers are also helping me out to understand game more in depth. So um, I can understand the basic things, but whenever it comes to the esports, <laughs> I'm pretty much professional. <laughs> so, so, so the the deep nitty gritty. Now, to arrive here, to be invited to Warsaw, you know, these teams have really had to go on a journey. I mean, this is three days of phenomenal esports, but it's been a journey. What's that journey been like for for Navi coming up to you know, kind of to take part in this, the grand finals? Um, I think like that. Worst thing is that we haven't boot camp before the event because we have some sort of the visa delays and uh, like invitations, some sort of the mess up. Meanwhile, I think it's uh, a very nice facility and a very great event. I hope that uh, all of the teams and spectators, I want to thank to all everybody here. Let's just <laughs> thank you for supporting the teams. Thank you for supporting such a great game, and I wish you good luck to all the best. Now, that's, that's also quite an interesting point. Obviously, Navi, a strong presence within esports. And we've really seen, you know, World of Tanks grow and become a real powerhouse as an esports title. What's that like to, like to see that and kind of see that growth happen within, within a title like this? I think that it's a very, it's a very, like, a good sign that esports is getting bigger and bigger. And the World of Tanks is one of them. It's a massive, it's a huge game, and it's very popular all around the world. And I think the more such titles will enter the esports scene, the more such a, like professional teams we will see here, professional production, and the fans and spectators. Uh, that's like the more esports as a global phenomenon will become uh, better and better and will reach the quality of the real sports like football and ba basketball, whatever. Growth on the horizon, but for now, I'm going to sit next to Alex, and I guess we're going to see Navi take this on, but there's two guys that we need to go to, and that's the casting team. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Navi, being here is obviously a pleasure. And we've had Fnatic and other big names like Virtus Pro all represented here in World of Tanks. It's absolutely fantastic to see such growth and interest in World of Tanks in such a young stage. I'm wondering what team will actually be next. Such exceptional play. Someone's got to be picking up one of these teams from any of these regions. They're all fantastic. And this game is only going up as it's more and more fun and more exciting as we gain more and more experience. So next map will be Ruimba. And if this one is a win for Na'Vi, it's over. They will go on, and Unity, this will be where their road stops. If Unity is able to win, they tie it up. But if a draw happens, it still goes to Na'Vi. The pressure is on for Unity. Yeah, really bad. Now, they were ahead in all their other matches since they gained their advantage. Have they ran out of steam? Are they a bit of nerves now? But the last game, they kind of won. It was a winning draw. I like to always say that like draws aren't always draw draws. In that case, it was a last-second save for Na'Vi. It wasn't a uh, draw in the sense of, like, oh, both teams decided not to engage. Unity won it, but yeah, it managed to get a Na'Vi last-second strategic draw. So... It's not really that much difference between these teams. It could go either way. And Unity must be kicking themselves that they didn't play that last map either a bit earlier or a bit more mm, oomph. A bit more oomph Aggressively. To it. Yeah. Uh, it's possible, but now that we're on Ruinberg, that middle road is going to be where I expect to see a large push coming out. City side going to be important. And the east, something I'm looking forward to for an opening scout run if we have any 1390s. 
Yeah, Ruinburg is one of these maps where anything can happen. You can have a massive aggression in the west, in the city, or you can have a bit of hill tricky play in the open. But anyway, let's go into game number three of Navi versus Unity. It is 2-1 to Navi. Red Rush Unity need to win this to stay in the tournament. They will not be able to see that monolith if they go and drop this game. Let's see those tanks. Something smells a little bit like cheddar. There are four <laughs> 50 100s and a 1390 against three 50 100s and two IS-3s. Uh, this, uh, this is not common, everyone. This is actually something I can't remember the last time I saw. Actually reminds me of something Unity said in their interview pre-match was they have to bring some special tactics to the field. And this, as we like to call cheese in World of Tanks, is some special tactics. We have got massive 50-100 play and look at Navi doing a PvP. Oh man, I just, I, I, I felt it coming. I just, I doubted that it was actually going to happen. But you can't blame Navi if they draw here. It's, it's, oh, it's game over. They win. But... They're putting themselves into a far back corner. They're not going to do anything to try and trap this out. And Unity read it. This is where the 5100s came in. This is why they picked oh. four 5100s. They saw this coming. Unity was like, well, Navi, what are they going to do? And they're going to do what PvP did. All the good teams know that if you are uh, up and you just need to draw and it's Ruinberg, go ultra defensive. Get in this area, which is like the formation is identical. It's exactly this play. We said last time that uh, obviously Fnatic took a little bit of time, but figured it out very quickly and then went for it. And they made that one mistake. Like it was two mini mistakes means one mistake, but they did win that attack. So if Unity are just a little bit better than Fnatic, then they can actually break this. It, it's very easy to break. It just requires the right execution. It just is, everyone has to be organized. Now, something I want to see before that attempted attack is, you know, the same T1 position that we see right now from Deluxe. It's if, if we see some, the right blind fire, that T1 goes down. That's a lot of spotting lost for Navi, meaning that the approach by Red Rush Unity would not be spotted allowing for them to actually execute even better and more efficiently. And since this is later on in the tournament, since PvP went uh, went ahead on this map from against Fnatic, they will know and research this moment. And they would have seen where Fnatic made their mistakes and they would have learned from that. And they know exactly what they're doing. Look at this movement in B1 and 2. They know what's happening. Navi know exactly what's happening too. Rhino's taking the blind shots. Will he connect? The answer is no so far. I believe it is... Dulux or Clip? The Dulux in uh, the he, head position. I he's believe. looking for Deluxe in the T1, and if he can find him, then awesome. But if not, then we're just we're, he's wasting a little bit time, and he can still they, they can still make it work. It's just going to be a l slightly harder for Unity. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm trying to think of what Navi is going to do once they discover the positions of Red Rush Unity. Uh, no damage going out yet. Inspire does not spot anyone. And there's no wrong moves yet by Unity. Everything is fine, but there is pinging going out. Yeah, well, the reload for Rhino, they have to wait for that, but there's seven minutes left. They've got all the time in the world to set this up to make sure it goes off perfectly. As you said during the PvP match, that if PvP realize what's going on, all they have to do is break out. Mm -hmm. Much like PvP had to do against Unity on Cliff, where they just had to go one way. And when you're encircled, if you hit the enemy lines where they're weakest, then you can break through and they lose so much of their firepower that when you come back against the other force, you can take them out as well. Because more guns, more DPS, you have to do it quick. You can actually overpower people with more HP as long as you've got more guns. So Navi could have that trick up their sleeve, feign this tactic and actually counter push. But looking at the movements, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm, I, it, yeah, they're too spread out. It's hard to make a counter push when you're Navi. I'm looking for someone to accidentally destroy a piece of cover. And that would reveal the position that Unity has. Cap is going to be spotted either by proxy, no, by proxy. Eclipse, but it could have been by Deluxe in a bush. Eclipse is on the top of the bit of rubble. I like this positioning. It's hard to deal with him. You have to go very far around the corner in order to kill this T1, which will uh, open you up to tanks to the, uh, to the south. Power Slide is in a 
beautiful keyhole position to counter that out. Yeah, Eclipse is in such a great position that if anyone takes him out, they will instantly receive damage. And if they get tracked and damaged at the same time, they receive another shell or lose their repair kit. So it's very dangerous position. Very great. Artie goes down for Unity. That's not a good sign for them as Left Shark gets the hit. Um, it's looking very nervous here for Unity, but they have to attack. They can't do what Fnatic had the choice of doing and retreating. They have to win this fight. I they messed up on Himmelstorff in that sense, and they have to do it here. Yeah, I didn't get to see if Artie was spotted before he go he went down. Was he, or was that blind fire? No, he was. He, he was, was spotted? spotted. Okay, I missed that part. It's just a uh, waste of Artie then. Uh, I, I, I don't understand what maybe they were going for. I, I, they got great spotting with Rhino, I think. The difference is Lafshar's position is mm -hmm. different to PvP's. So if Unity thought that they played exactly like PvP would, there is a slight difference and the approach by Arty would have been caught out by him. So, you know, there, there is a little bit of difference, just tiny different positions that they've chosen, and it might just be that much more effective. Unity, 4 minutes 40, decide if they are actually going to go through or not to the uh, fifth, fourth they're, map. They're actually going to do right now what they were doing on Himmelsdorf, which is burn the clock. They're just going to burn it for a while so that they can maybe throw cap somewhere i don't know I, I don't even know if they're gonna be able to get him out he's kind he's he's pinned in this position if he tries to leave someone may take the risk of peeking out knowing that the rest of unity is actually trying to hide from being spotted why would they burn the clock though if they draw here they are out this is it this is the decider for them if they burn the clock it actually just makes it worse for them because now we'll just sit back and go, okay make the draw happen we don't mind we will go against virtus pro and get our revenge because that's it. That's, that is the end of the road for them. They need to win here. I can't stress that enough. And Unity needs to win. If they realize that, then it must be that they're prepping. They're, they're saying, all right, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to go in. You're going to look left. We're all going to focus on this guy. He's going to be right in this position here, there. And that's what they're talking to each other. They are beginning to move, though. And very soon, we may see the trees are going down, revealing this push to Na'Vi. They are definitely paying attention, and they will be ready for this attack. Unity have decided that 3 minutes 38 is the time that they're going to attack it. Rhino leads the charge, receiving three shots straight away, down half HP, down to dead! Rhino went down immediately, what focus fire from Navi, Antelich is down to half HP, Unity is so much trouble, 340, Antelich goes down, Dino's down to 432, the focus fire from Navi is too much as Killeroid and Power Slide takes a little bit of return fire, but Dino's down to 111, he gets one more shot from, he goes down, Lucique needs one more, and he will explode! and then it's just nuclear left and it's all up to Navi to clean up now they have three minutes seven to do it I think Unity know it's all over there take it off their headsets and there we have it now they go through back into the finals they have to go against Virtus Pro to get that monolith but they are safe great playing by Unity but not enough Unity so Navi are your winners here they're just a flawless defense we were wondering what Unity was going to be able to do we thought they would they would figure this out, but they sent a 1390 in alone with no support yet. The 5100s were not there. One tank went down, and that that's it. You can't you can't break that. Whoa, um, there's there's Navi leaving their boots. Congratulate their opponents. Great sports, uh, Navi gentlemen and squires in defeat or victory. These guys are always smiling. Lefshaw sure came out of their loss from uh, Virtus Pro, smiling, hugged his opponents. Like they, they love the competition. They want to meet people who can beat them because that's the only way they can get better. And these guys know each other, right? They, Navi was formerly a Red Rush team. They, these guys know each other very well, even though I think Red Rush has had a number of uh, changes to the roster in the past year. Yeah, but all the top players are constantly shifting between the top teams. As we said about Unity, they've changed uh, 30 players in the last year, and it's obviously the best players are constantly coming through. Now we're going to know every single one of them. They have got their fingers on the pulse of everything that's happening in this scene. So, so, you, so you think they're friends? Not friends, but they're aware of each other. They respect each other. They know their opponents are good. They know of them. They may be friends. They may be enemies, but they respect each other. And that's the important key of sportsmanship. All right. Well, as we see, they go back into their booth to finish packing up. Uh, HyperX, being, SteelSeries being their sponsor, so they're wearing those kinds of headsets. Good technology there. Well, anyway, we do have our final match from us to a final match from us to next match will be Navi Vert versus Virtus Pro versus Virtus Pro, Good. and that would be one map advantage for Virtus Pro, and that could be the difference. We've seen teams when they're one up 
B defensive. We've seen teams one up B defensive. It's a best of seven though. Only one up playing defensive. I don't think they're gonna do that. I don't uh, think Virtus Pro can pull that off. I, I doubt it as well. Um, we're expecting this. There's there's maps I don't think we'll see like steps. Uh, there's maps I'm fairly positive we'll see like mines. I don't think that anyone's going to camp out mines against Navi. They're just too good at breaking that position. It's I I don't think it's possible. No, but we will see. That's the only way to say it. We will see. There's nothing we can say to predict that matchup. We thought that Navi would win. And we're like, okay, they've got the experience here, but Virtus Pro had the boot camp and it paid off. They did defeat Navi once already. So Navi has to go into this last match with absolutely everything they got. If they have a trick up their sleeve, now is the time to play it. They did seem to play quite standard against Unity. So I think they still have some tricks. And we have to look at their past performances. All their past performances are okay during the entire league and the entire playoff plays, and then they get to the finals and play something completely different. And I cannot wait to see that. But over to the stage to have the interview with Navi. Thank you very much, guys. Great job with the casting. What a fantastic game to see. I'm here on the stage with Deluxe and Eclipse from Navi after that game, and obviously they're pretty happy to be in the grand final, no doubt. I do want to ask you guys, on that last map, uh, of course, of Ruinberg, the strategy you played... Is there any way to beat that? How do you how do you beat that? Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, just a rule of best of one. We won uh, first uh, map, and after this, uh, we don't need to uh, go uh, attack. Yeah. We just uh, stay and wait on, on two maps. Yeah, patient play. You waited for them to make the mistake. Now tell me, you're going to be going up against Virtus Pro. A uh, very close match between you and them earlier on. What do you think you need to, ch I guess, need to change? Because I know obviously you, you lost. Um, but what happened there? What are you trying to fix it? What was the main issue for you? We did a lot of a lot of mistake mistakes with uh, Virus Pro versus Virus Pro. Maybe some impatience. Yeah, maybe some impatience, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. And we look forward to seeing you hit the main stage again for our grand final map. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Navi, our second finalists. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting pretty good at doing this uh, by now. We're going to pass it over to our experts to break that game down for us bit by bit. Thank you, Uber, like a true pro. And congratulations to Navi. They'll be in the grand finals against... Virtus Pro, but before we delve deep into that series, let's check in with Melly to tell us a little bit more about the MVP award. Exactly. We have the Alienware MVP coming up, which will be announced in a bit, I guess. And I asked the community at home what their predictions would be. I put up, a, I've already put up a challenge on Facebook where people at home can announce their very own. MVP. Of course, our experts and caster will pick our proper Alienware MVP, but let's see how people at home, well, who's the, the favorite of, of them. So if we have a look on my screen, we can see, well, if you head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU, you will see a post where you see two pictures. And this is, by the way, the Alienware system, the, the, M, the Alienware MVP gets. That's a beautiful system. Alien, I'd like to participate. I, we can't. We can. <laughs> We're the ones that they get to choose and we have uh, spoken to the other commentator teams here and that choice will be re revealed around the corner. But a huge thank you to Alienware for offering that reward exactly. for the MVP. We've seen a lot of fantastic plays coming out of each of these team members. Uh, I have to say one of that series on uh, Himmelsdorf was crazy how he used that 5100. But gentlemen, let's start at the beginning here. Mines Navi is able to take this first map and how they share their HP. Take notes, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you play World of Tanks, especially when you're under a lot of fire. How do they do it? What is it about the mechanics of these different players that allow them to so effectively stay alive longer than their opponents? It will come down to that they have been playing together forever. They haven't changed a single player, so they are so used to play together. And I think they work in pairs that Okay, I haven't taken some damage. You go up, you take the next shot, and they're just trading. I think the they're HP. getting more HP as players. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's something like that. They're it's leveling cheap. up, right? They're leveling they up until they more, more than other teams. That's why they're the big final boss for these tournaments. They just have too much gosh darn HP. These players have to take out. But 
That's not the fact. I mean, it, it's uh, how they're playing their tanks, where they're positioning, and also their exit strategies. Navi knows when to back up, and they know when to trade that fire. And that is so crucial, because we're seeing a lot of these teams fully engage, go YOLO mode, and not have an exit strategy. You must have an exit strategy in any type of engagement. Yeah, the point is that Navi got it in their mind. Every player knows and got the feeling for it. You don't have to uh, wait for the command of the commander. You're already on the move. So if the commander shout out, go back, you're already on the uh, move back. And that's a really important thing, that you're already ahead. So these few seconds are enough, but you have to be ahead of your enemy. Have to. You have Sun Tzu, to. proper Sun Tzu. Battle should be won before it starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, the, in the mines, uh, Unity actually had crossfire going to the Navi's position, but they just they couldn't do it. Navi shared the HP and killed Unity's tanks. But they really did aggressive stuff. Unity, they climbed up hill with VZ, which you called. Yeah. They're really fast, aggressive, over 3090s. But what we can't grasp, what Unity really wanted from South with tank like 416. Yeah, we talked about that. He has a match. really bad cooldown. Uh, not many shooting angles. I don't know. I really can't. From south, from north, I can figure it out. From south, really yeah. hard. From north, you yeah. can use it like to take control of the hill, then take it back to the A4 location, to the higher ground, and start shooting from there. But from the south, we couldn't make up a reason why they are playing it. Himmelsdorf. Yeah, I just ahead. want to add, maybe they had no backup tactics for this, because they played it before with the object and it didn't work out, and so normally they should change it. But I think they had no proper backup tactic to work against Navi, so they tried it again. Yeah, Got to have that, that plan B in a lot of these engagements exactly, for a yeah. lot of these teams. And sometimes that plan B is playing defensive. <laughs> and after <laughs> Navi's aggression, that's what they were able to do in the last one. Before we jump into Ruinberg, let's talk about Himmelsdorf. The hill play from Red Rush. It was an amazing, amazing uh, reaction from Killeroid. Uh, Red Rush pushed to the hill with the four tanks, and Navi did see nothing in the map. Nothing. And Killeroid was climbing up with the 5100, but he turned around at the right second that he escaped without taking any shot. They only lost T1. I think he, he already got punished once on mines. He didn't want to take again yeah. against Virtus. <laughs> and in the Himmelstorf, we all again saw that when Navi lost both T1s, they went to the south, so northwest corner and started camping again. The camp fest can happen for a little while too long for a lot of these teams, especially when time is on the line. Now, we briefly talked about the MVP award a little bit earlier, and <laughs> Power Slide was the MVP of that series with how he used that 5100. Incredible play. This is a plan B, all right? I'm going to detail yeah. it for you guys. You're on the run. You got two IS-3s chasing you down. You know that you can't fire back. You're reloading. You are a French heavy tank with not a whole lot of armor value. But you can do something when you're reloading, and that's to block those two IS-3s. They were coming around the corner. It allowed his teammate, who was Le Shaw, to escape, to hide and not take any damage, and that allowed the draw to happen. We saw the fire emanating from Anatolich as he was so upset with seeing that. And can you briefly describe what Anatolich was trying to do? Because to me, it seemed Red Rush Unity had it in the bag. Yeah, yeah, they had. Actually, uh, Anatolis tried to flank Le Shaw and uh, Power Slide. Uh, he thought that they are fighting the three tanks that were in the cap circle, but Le Shaw, <laughs> he had the gamers and said six cents. He was ready and waiting because they knew Anatolis was one shot and he took the shot. And immediately after the shot, he just ran away. He didn't stay and fight, he started running. He didn't hesitate? No, he and didn't. It, I, Right away after the shot, he started running away. And that's that quick decision making, as we've seen on the stats many, many times, ladies and gentlemen. Through the roof, no, it I seems. I would say I just told to Power Slide, sorry, dude, someone had to pay for all this fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Every man for right, himself. <laughs> that's that, you know, the plan B that we're talking about, but also the type of sense. The greatest threat is the one you never see. And when you can pinpoint when the, where the enemy tanks are, they're in the firefight, even if it's a three on two in that direction, you know, if I was the enemy team, where would I approach? It was that corner, and because of that, Lasha was ready for him. Beautiful play coming out of Navi, and once again, we see a prime but example of why. Also, we must say, they're so good. Unity broke their cap. Yes. They did. That was a game in their hands. Timer, timer stopped it, but they won the game. Yeah. Morally, at least. Yeah, they and they managed told, to break through the, they won something the fire that fight. no one did. Yeah. Like, most of the teams died even when Navi had four tanks there. God forbid, all five. <laughs> and <laughs> that's one of the toughest things any of these teams are going to try to do is break. 
that turtle mode of Navi, and that's what we saw on, on Ruinberg. And Navi played the best strategy on this map in the south. Wait, <laughs> go back in yeah, that corner and hold it. Yeah, you we don't have to attack. This yeah. is like Deluxe said. They didn't have to do anything, and they knew it. But since we have blind picks, uh, Unity had to prepare. Maybe Navi will attack, maybe they will camp, maybe they will this. So they had 13090 as a spotter and 450s so they can do swift rotations and maybe fight if they camp. But when you camp with two IS-3s and 350s, you just can't do it. Yeah. You have to come around the corners and these guys know to shoot. Especially with this focus fire from Navi. I mean, you just have to watch the replay once and only watch the hit points from um, Unity. And it's one tank is dropping down, exactly. the one shot, one tank goes, the next tank is dropping, going down. There's no um, crossfire, nothing. One tank goes down, next tank goes down. And so fast and so perfect precision. Perfect. They pick the immediate threat, they yeah. focus on that threat, and they move as one, they fire as one. And that is, again, one of the top firefights and decision-making yeah. stats that we have for Na'Vi. The question... Go ahead. Yeah, Unity tried... To, Unity did it good. They tried to use Rhinal as a decoy, but when you try to play a decoy with 1390, you don't really have that... HP to do it, so he, he just disappeared. Immediately. Yeah. 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 Just was gone. It just gave it, it up. It was funny because yeah. uh, that's not a T1. I mean, he <laughs> so far. Wow. He, he didn't shoot a single time, I think. No. Yeah, he didn't take a single no. time. He was still trying to get on the move. Now, I'm going to bring this question up, and it's going to be the toughest question pretty much for any team to try to answer. How, to you, how do you defeat the turtle mode of Na'Vi? Do you swing wider around? Do you keep moving around the corners instead of stopping and poking back and forth? How do you HP share effectively? What can these teams do if they're in a position, if Virtus Pro is in a position where they must win? It's on Ruenberg, southwest corner is Navi. What's the strategy? Tank picks. Tank, Tank picks. picks. Yeah. You cannot do it with these tanks. It's impossible against teams like that. If they had like a similar setup with some IS-3s, maybe on a T32, but IS-3s and 50s, they had a theoretical chance. Like this, it was okay, we have nothing to lose, and we must push. What about a KV-5? Oh, no <laughs> option. Mr. Huge and the it's too slow. Mr. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it, if, actually, it can, if it can actually, be a moving wall for these actually, tanks to... Actually, KV-5 could be a big, solution, bigger corner. because uh, at one moment when he... I would say KV-5 would be a better solution than 1390 to do this direction. Yeah, <laughs> it can be, but... If it can just absorb a little bit more damage compared to another tank, and if they have the focus fire for the first tank around the corner, and if they have a trifecta slant push coming around one of the corners where the KV-5 is leading it, the charge comes to the 250-100s, they land their shots, KV-5 is able to get damage on one or two of them, they could kill a tank faster than the KV-5 going down. The window is small, but it's still there. It's not even in will KV-5 do some damage, it's how much damage will it take to kill him. Yeah. And it must be killed, he shoots fast. So if 50s have to waste two, three, four shots each to lay him down, then the other team has perfect uh, chance to win. We saw when uh, Virtus on Ensk was doing counter-attack on Navi, who was in offensive. Three 50s came with their clips and wiped out the entire team. They disappeared like nothing. So that would be the chance using such tank. Yeah. And, and you do lose the offensive capabilities, if that's not the case on the enemy team, if they see the KV-5, like, well, we can just play more mobile. We yeah, can exactly. do something differently compared that's to... That's a problem camping. with the blind pick. If yeah. you know they uh, pick the setup, like I3, 51 go for the corner, you can pick a 51 uh, KV-5. On the global, uh, Golden League, they did it in Russia and tried to break through with the KV-5. It nearly worked, but the result was the same, the defender won. So it is an option for sure, but you need also I3s to go for the alpha damage and yeah, peek out, do damage, go back without losing too much hit points. I would say these games we watch now were much more, not so pretty to watch always, uh, more stable, but uh, they did the job. They did the job, and the Red Rush Unity has plenty to be proud of. Third place. Third place. And yeah. yes, they're still under the shadow of Na'Vi, but I feel that Na'Vi has shown some more weaknesses to these teams that maybe weren't as present before, and I feel the confidence of Red Rush Unity will improve after the results that they've had throughout the whole weekend. And so we have to say congratulations to Red Rush Unity on that placement and best of luck in the next season. I would say Navi is not an ego trip team, so they will probably look upon mistakes they did and yeah. they will think how to fix it. You, you could already see a fix on Himmelser. Killeroy didn't take a single shot. They had never a split second chance to do it. He was always half a step ahead. So we will see. Next yeah. games against Virtus, 
now he has to play aggressive because they're one game down. This yeah. will be fun to watch. It will, definitely. It will. it will. I'm looking forward to it, folks. I'm sure all of you are as well watching from around the world. Make sure to interact with us. The hashtag The Grand Finals. Coming up next is the MVP Award presentation. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we come to this part of the tournament where we take the time to honor one particular player. One player, not only is it about hitting the shots and doing the damage, but bringing passion to the game, motivating his team, the most valuable player. Now, it's, uh, this, is, this is the Alienware MVP competition, by the way, and Alienware, fantastic, uh, putting up the uh, 17 series laptop as a prize, so very, very amazing piece of gear. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you join with me in uh, welcoming to the stage our most valuable player, Batman from PvP Super Friends! Now, Batman, obviously, this is an award given to not only the technically skilled players, but the passionate players, uh, you know, the most valuable players. And, and that is obviously you, and that's been the experts here. And, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm so pleased to obviously be able to present this to you. How are you feeling right now? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you to uh, all the supporters, um, thank you to Wargaming for making this e event possible. Thank you to all the Polish fans here, even if I'm Filipino. All of you are cheering for me. It's a great honor to be here. and um, I hope I entertained every one of you. And please keep supporting us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Batman. Look, tell us, what is next for you guys? Obviously, it's a long trip home. PvP uh, heading all the way back to the Philippines. What's next for you guys as a team? More vacations! <laughs> <laughs> More vacations? Well, I think you may have earned one uh, on this vacation. Well done. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you have a safe trip home, ladies and gentlemen. One more time, can you give you a round of applause for Batman, the most valuable player? Okay, well, Sean took some time early on today to actually catch up with Batman and have a quick interview with him. So let's, let's see what Batman had to say about his time here in Warsaw. Every team that descended upon Warsaw was already a winner. They already proved to get here that they had what it takes. They came here to see who was the champion. And PvP, you've been a phenomenal, phenomenal team. And really, yesterday, setting the world alight with you know your antics, with uh, the the way that you were so honest in playing, how are you feeling now? Uh, right now I'm I'm pretty sad. I really wanted to win, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy we got fourth place, and um, hopefully we can do a lot better next time. Now, yesterday you did actually in your celebration say, "We've already got fourth place." So, do, do do you feel now that you've actually proved that in order to be there today? Yeah, I think I think we did prove that. Um, we just did, we just play with all with all our hearts, and um, we just play with all honesty, and just went through. And uh, we're so lucky. I don't know. Everything was just. I'm sorry. I just can't talk properly now. I'm just really you're, sad. You're, <laughs> you're absolutely fine. It's it's okay. I can imagine that this is is, is a big moment. I mean, it's fair to say that. Yesterday, you definitely made esports history and you definitely put PvP on the map for a lot of people who perhaps weren't familiar with you. How does that make you feel to know that you've kind of taken that step from being one of the, let's say, the Cinderella teams coming into this? You, you joked about being a little bit uh, the vacation yeah, team. Yeah. <laughs> how, how does that make you feel? Um, yeah, we, we really didn't expect to get this high and just um, showing our, all of our talents. Um, I'm just happy that I was able to make the Asian scene proud and prove to everyone that our server doesn't suck, that we have a chance in this competition. Yeah. So now, obviously, proving has been important for you, but do you have any words for the, the guys watching at home that have been supporting you, that are now up to you? What would you like to say to them? 
Oh, thank you to everyone who watches World of Tanks. Thank you for all the support here. Uh, it's very, I'm very happy that every uh, people just come up to me and say, oh, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, what? I'm nobody. And like, it, it's just what, very overwhelming for me. And uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who's watching. Thank you to all the supporters. And thank you to Wargaming to, for making this event possible. Well, I can say quite safely, you're not no one. You're Batman. <laughs> and you're definitely... Definitely a favorite. Really a great, great, great participant. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, yeah. See you guys. PvP number one, still number one. <laughs>